Hey guys, uh, this is Mr. Barthold, and in this video, I'm going to go over um, how to solve some of the conservation of energy problems that uh, we did during class. I know a lot of people, they saw all those kinetics of potentials being added together, and there's just a lot of few different steps, and so this video will hopefully um, give you the steps and uh, go through two examples that you can use at home to study. So, um, the first example that we are going to do, uh, this was one of your homework problems, and it says that the Empire State Building is 381 meters tall. If you drop a penny from the top of it, how fast will it be going when it hits the ground? And we are going to neglect the air that will slow down the penny. So assuming there's no air resistance, how fast will it be going? And uh, for if you're curious, the Empire State Building is actually 300 meters hopefully potential energy. When it falls, that potential energy is converted to kinetic energy because it starts to speed up and up and up, so it gets more and more kinetic energy. However, it is going lower to the ground, so it gives less potential energy, so it converts from potential to kinetic. Um, so we're going to use that and we'll go draw a little picture up here. So we have Empire State Building. It's got a little, little needle up top. Mm -hmm. That's a really bad Empire State Building. And it is 381 meters tall. It has a lot of and got a little penny that we're going to drop from the top of it. And the penny is going to be and it's going to fall down here. Right, and right before it hits the ground, we want to know how fast it's going to be going. What is how fast? So, at the top, there is a certain amount of mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the total energy, kinetic plus potential. So there is mechanical energy here. There is mechanical energy down here. There's actually mechanical energy everywhere, but we're only concerned about um, the top and the bottom part because one, we're dropping it from the top, and two, it's hitting the bottom. So uh, mechanical energy consists of two things, kinetic and potential combined to create mechanical energy. So mechanical energy is kinetic plus potential, remember U is potential, and same for down here, K plus U, kinetic plus potential. We know that energy is conserved, so mechanical energy has to be conserved. So if this is the mechanical energy at the top, it has to equal the mechanical energy at the bottom, because the total energy cannot change. So that has to equal that. However much energy it has at the top is the same amount of energy it has at the bottom. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, however you want to think about it. That's what it is. Um, so, combining these two, we have a line, kinetic at the top of the Empire State Building plus the potential at the top equals the kinetic energy at the bottom, bot to the bottom, plus the potential at the bottom. Alright, and for all of these conservation of energy problems, this is really your first step. Right? I'm actually going to I'm going to write that on this little square paper so we can use it for the next problem. So step one is understanding that mechanical energy is conserved. So K plus U, one and one equals K two plus U two. So we have whether well, it's top or bottom, or we're doing uh, the next problem is going to be loop the loop, and so we'll, we'll see how we're going to use that. So step one, I'll set that aside. Now we go through each of these k's and u's, and we're going to substitute them with either a zero or the appropriate method to find kinetic or potential energy. For instance, at the top, is there kinetic energy? We ask ourselves, hmm, what has to happen for there to be kinetic energy? Hmm. Kinetic energy is energy in motion. All right, so it has to be moving. Is the penny moving at the top? No, it is not. So is there kinetic energy? No. So zero. There is no kinetic energy because it's not moving yet. However, is there potential energy? Specifically, gravitational potential energy. And in order for it to be gravitational potential energy, there has to be the potential to fall because gravity wants to make things fall. So if there's potential to fall, that means it's very high in the sky or it doesn't have to be very high. It can just be 
regularly high, if that makes any sense at all. Um, and the answer is yes, there is a lot of potential to fall. So there is potential energy and gravitational potential is, if you look in your notes, m, g, and h. So mass times gravity times height gives us that um, gravitational potential. That is equal to you know, the kinetic energy at the bottom. Is there kinetic energy at the bottom? Is it moving? It's about to hit the ground. It is moving very, very quickly. Yes, there is kinetic energy at the bottom. So how do we determine kinetic energy? Looking at our notes, again, we have 1 half mv squared. So 1 half times the mass times the velocity squared. And finally, is there potential energy at the bottom? Hmm. Well, it's, it's about to hit the ground. It's basically on the ground. And if it's on the ground, gravity can't do anything else to it. There's no potential for it to go anywhere else. So the potential energy is zero because there is no height. Remember, mgh, if the height is zero, then the potential energy is zero. So we're going to put a zero there. And so we have this, we have 0 plus that, 0 plus that, so we can pretend we don't have the zeros. So mgh equals 1 half mv squared. But Mr. Barthold, hold on. You only gave us the height. You did not give us the mass. So how am I supposed to figure that out? I can't substitute mass into that. What am I going to do? It's all right. Don't freak out. We're going to solve this. What are we looking for? We're looking for how fast. Fast speed equals velocity. Which of these is velocity? This V right here. We've got to solve for velocity. I'm going to go ahead and circle that in pencil. I don't want to get this all markered up. Velocity. So that means we've got to get it by itself. I have to get velocity by itself. Shucks, we have this pesky mass right here. What are we going to do? It's multiplied by velocity, so we've got to divide the mass to get rid of it. Divide by mass. Mass cancels over here. Oh look, mass cancels over here. So when the dust clears there, there's no more mass. So we have GH. So gravity times height is 1 half times V squared. Hey look, we don't need mass anymore. Magic. We only need the height. It's one of the beautiful things about this. Is that just by knowing the height of something, we, we can relate that height to, um, to speed, to kinetic energy. Um, so now we have this half. To get rid of that, we can just multiply both sides by 2. So 2 times a half is 1. So those go away. V squared equals 2GH. And here you can, you can substitute your numbers in here and take the square root, or you can solve it one final step. V is equal to the square root of 2GH. Plugging that in, we have V is equal to the square root of 2 times gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, longer, times the height, 381 meters. I'll do even do it on the calculator here for you. So seeing, seeing is believing. So we have the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 381, 86.4 meters per second. 86.4 meters per second. Box it in so we know for sure. There we have it. Alrighty. So um, to finish off our steps, step two, after we had our K and U, we substituted each of them. So substitute either a zero if it doesn't have any, or the appropriate equation if it does. So remember one half and be squared or mgh. Finally, last step, we simply need to solve for what we're looking for. In this case, we're looking for velocity. Solve for velocity. Plug your numbers in, and you get your answer. So, if you're all curious, Mythbusters did a uh, little show on this, and the penny dropped from the top of the Empire State Building will not kill you. Even though it is traveling 86.4, actually, wind resistance, it will be going a little bit slower. Um, but Mythbusters proved that the penny will not, even if it lands on your head, it'll just get a really big bump. It's not going to kill you. You will survive. Life will go on. And uh, you will 
live a better life now that you have calculated exactly how fast that penny was going when it hit your head. So, hopefully, we, here's the entire problem. We're going to do another problem in another video, and uh, a little bit harder, but uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. So that's all for this. Hope you got something out of it. Take care.